What's up, y'all? It's Lauren. Welcome back to Another Where Is. I hope y'all are having a great day today. Today, I have another case for you guys, so let's just jump right into it. Today, we will be discussing the disappearance of Larisha Walker. Larisha Deanna Walker, who goes by Deanna, was born on January 2nd, 1976 in Nashville, Tennessee, and was just 23 years old when she disappeared. Her family described her as someone who was a private person. They said that she was responsible and that she was very protective over her son, Rayvon, who was two years old at the time of her disappearance. She was employed at Peterbilt Motors Company in 1999, the same year of her disappearance. November 19th in 1999 was like any other day for Deanna. She dropped her two-year-old son off at her sister Lakeisha Chambers' house on the 900 block of Gale Street to stay the night because she had an appointment scheduled in Murfreesboro, Tennessee the next morning to get her car appraised, which was a 1995 red four-door Oldsmobile Achieva. That night, Deanna made a call to her father, Sidney Walker, between 9.30 and 10 p.m. I'm not sure what their conversation was about, and I'm not sure if her father has ever said what the conversation was about, but from my research, I did not see any details about their conversation. That same night, a neighbor of Deanna's reported that they heard Deanna arguing with someone outside of her home in the 3800 block of Edwards Avenue, and this would be the last time that anyone would hear from Deanna. The next day, on November 20th, Deanna's sister noticed something was wrong because Deanna hadn't called or tried to contact any of her family members that day. Again, she left her son with her sister the day before, so I'm sure her sister was expecting a call from her, letting her know when she was coming to pick her son up. So since no one had heard from Deanna, her sister decided to go by her home and check on her to make sure everything was okay. Once her sister got to her home, she noticed that Deanna's lights were on inside the house and there was super loud music that was playing, but Deanna was not there. Lakeisha said that nothing looked out of place in the home, the screen door was locked, and no one had appeared to have broken in. The only thing out of the ordinary was her lights being left on and the loud music. So, Lakeisha said that since nothing really seemed alarming, she just turned the lights and the music off and then she left Deanna's home. The next day, on November 21st, Deanna's family still had not heard from her, so her sister decided to go back to her home that morning to see if she was there. When she got there, her sister came to find her home empty, but this time she decided to look around a bit more. As she was looking around, she noticed that the clothes that Deanna had worn on the 19th of November were still in her home, which means she did at some point change her clothes. She also noticed that Deanna's bed looked like two people had been sitting on it, so her family believes that whoever was in the home with her, it was someone she knew. Now, the main thing that was alarming to her sister was that she noticed Deanna's medicine was still in her home. Deanna had a heart condition and she took medication for it, so if she was to leave, she definitely would have taken her medicine with her. So at this point, her sister knew that something was definitely not right, and with their calls still going unanswered, her mother Wanda filed a missing persons report with the police. Now, earlier I told you guys that Deanna did have a car, a 1995 Oldsmobile Achieva, and earlier on in the investigation, authorities discovered that not only was Deanna missing, but so was her car. Again, her car was red with a Tennessee license plate number 419-ABG and had a long scratch along the driver's side of the car. And to this day, her car still has not been located. Sadly, Deanna's family says that they have absolutely no clues or tips about what happened to her or where she could be. 
It has been 21 years since her disappearance, and investigators have not released any information whether or not they have received any tips regarding Deanna's case, but her family still continues to search for answers. Now, if Deanna's disappearance wasn't already enough for her family, they actually had another tragedy happen in 2016. On October 5th in 2016, Deanna's mother, Wanda Faye Walker, disappeared from Nashville, Tennessee, 17 years after Deanna's disappearance. That day was also a normal day for Wanda. She was supposed to go in for her shift at the Dollar Tree on Franklin Pike. While she was on her way to work, Wanda had ran into some car troubles when her Nissan Maxima overheated, so she pulled over to the side of the road and that is when she called her boyfriend to come help her out. Once her boyfriend got there, he put some oil in her car and helped her get it back up and running again, and it is reported that the two parted ways, but Wanda had actually never shown up for work that day and no one has seen or heard from her since. Now, on October 13th, so eight days after Wanda's disappearance, authorities had located Wanda's car, which was found abandoned and locked in an alley that was outside a residence in the 1000 block on Wade Avenue. The residents that lived there said that they had seen the Nissan just sitting there for about a week. When authorities discovered the car, there was no sign of Wanda and the residents told authorities that they had never seen Wanda in the car or getting out of the car. Once authorities got inside the car, they found Wanda's purse as well as traces of blood in the back seat, which Detective Filter, who was assigned to the case, determined was indeed Wanda's blood. The blood in her purse were all that investigators had uncovered regarding Wanda's disappearance. Again, regarding both cases, there have been no leads, but it is believed that Deanna was possibly abducted. Family and friends of Wanda and Deanna say that it is not like either of them to just up and leave. Again, Deanna had a son who she loved and Wanda as well had children, family, and friends that she loved as well. Authorities have not found anything that links the two cases together and again, both remain unsolved. It's just so mind-blowing to me that a mother and her daughter can both go missing and there literally be no tips, no clues, nothing. Like, there's no information really at all as to what happened to them and my heart just breaks for their family. The family has spent so many years looking for their missing loved ones and says that they lean on prayer and have faith that someone will eventually come forward with information regarding both of their loved ones. For me, I hope that authorities go back and just take a closer look into Deanna's life and who she was talking to. If she was dating someone at the time, I wish they would have gotten more specific details from the neighbor that heard her arguing with someone that night and just really dig deeper into what she had going on at that time because I'm sure whoever she was arguing with most likely could have had something to do with her disappearance. Regarding Wanda's case, I don't know if authorities really looked into her boyfriend, but if not, they need to look into him because he was obviously the last person to see her. If you have any information at all regarding either case, you can contact the Metro Nashville Police Department at 615-862-8600. Deanna, again, was just 23 years old at the time of her disappearance. She was African-American and stood 5 foot 7 inches and weighed about 190 to 200 pounds. She has black hair and brown eyes and has a capped tooth trimmed in gold with the letter D on one of her upper front teeth as well as pierced ears. She also has a surgical scar on the left side of her chest from a heart operation. Deanna's mother Wanda was 60 years old at the time of her disappearance and was also 5 foot 7 inches and weighed 180 pounds. She is also African American with blonde hair in an afro, brown eyes, and has pierced ears. Again, if you have any information, please speak up so we can bring this family some answers.
Well, that is it for me today, you guys. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and please stay safe and I will see you in the next episode.